my neck. See you, bye. See you, bye. Mine. Daddy! Hey! Mommy! Mommy, daddy, mommy. Where's my spare pants, mommy? Welcome to Anderson's uh, Where's My Spare Pants Cheers. episode. Cheers! It's Telly Tuesday. It is Telly Tuesday. Uh, which is actually a complete coincidence, and but I, maybe that's a thing. It maybe, is a thing. Maybe Tuesdays is the day telly sound the best. I mean, this is absolutely incredible. As you all know, we are we do love a telecaster here. And, uh, oh, it's not going to be a surprise. It's not a surprise. And uh, sometimes stuff arrives. Uh, and I didn't even know these have, have arrived. I just looked at the list. You said the list. And it's like, oh, we got some new telecasters that have has arrived. And hadn't seen them, came over, opened up all the boxes and literally just laid myself onto them on the floor like this. Going, thank you. So that the... the you probably oh. remember that, that you know our <laughs> love affair with Telecasters. I'm looking around for it. I can't see it anywhere. Is it at home? I, I think anyway, it is at the, home. The, yeah. The purple telly that Pete got from from Anderton's uh, when he pretty much first started working here, and then we've <laughs> over the last three or four years we we really really honed down what it is about that guitar that is special. But, yeah. And we we try to recreate it as closely as we can. Yeah. Uh, in the Fender Custom Shop, uh, and we've done different colours. Uh, couple of different neck sizes so there's one it's basically there's one slightly chunkier neck and then there's one slight they're both chunky necks aren't they but one's like probably 50s chunky ones maybe one's like early 50s chunky ones maybe late 50s chunky. yeah yeah we call it um large c U and large c yeah um and yeah. then really the telly journey has kind of carried on from there and it's like every time we meet our custom shop guy we're just like so what what, what other kind of vibes would be cool yeah and well, we did said some Sorry, and we did some we did some double bound. Do you remember we did the we did a green? Yes, like a candy regular green. tellies in double bound. Yeah, yes. double bound. It was like we hadn't done that before, so we yeah. did that. And then uh, when we were at Nam uh, earlier this year, I bumped into the TV Jones guys, and I, I, I've I've seen some of these telly casters. They, they one came in a gold with a Bixby on it. Well, they did a Cabernita and thing, didn't they? They did a Cabernita was... thing. And, I, and I've always been intrigued by these uh, TV Joan pickups because I never had. Yeah. So we, well, we, we played around with the with the custom shop guy, and we were going yeah. like, because the Cabernita has a slightly different. Uh, it's not bound. It's, it's and it has a slightly different scratch plate on it. And yes, we were like, half. do I like that? Don't I like that? I'm not sure. Yeah. So we we ended up on a on a basic design, which was a relatively traditional Telecaster um, scratch plate. Of course, you've got this really like hardtail Strat style bridge. Yeah. Two TV Jones humbuckers, um, strung through body. The uh, our favourite large C yeah. neck profile, I mean, which is the just, same as off off of these. It just feels rose with board. So and of course, I, I completely accept that the relic thing is divisive. Pete and I love it, so yeah. um, that's what we almost always spec. It, it for me and or for us, it, it just gives it that instant. It's worn in. It plays great. There's no sense that there's no sense that you feel like you need to own this guitar for sort of ten years before there's that real connection there. It's like that the connection's like straight out the box. Yeah, because I think you think um, you get scared of a lot of the guitars that are really yeah. pretty and pristine. I personally I do when I pick up a really expensive mm. guitar because these are not cheap. Mind no, you. no, no, they're crazy. Uh, you know, <laughs> like me. But, but you know, when we did the video on those POS guitars and you pick it up and you're very sort of aware that it's yeah. so pristine and you can hardly touch it. But uh, Filtertron pickups. Are we going to ch chat about those? Or yeah, are we, sure. Are we, I mean, look, um, you're, you're you know more about Filtertron than me. So. Well, well, the Filtertron is kind of a, 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 a in between humbugger and a, and a single coil. And Filtertron, uh, the TV Jones company, was started back in '93, uh, uh, trying to recreate the old um, Filtertron pickups. Because these are not Filtertron; they're TV Jones uh, pickups that were used in the Gretz and that kind of twangy kind of tone. Uh, and of course, since then. They've developed these amazing pickups and now working it's funny with them. I wonder why of... it seems like people do. I don't, I don't actually know whether or not there's some reason why you can't make old filtertrons or whatever. But it seems like even Gretsch now will use TV Jones. Yeah, you it, know. Yeah. And anyway. Anyway, it's well, you know, and it's just it's certainly a different sounding pickup. Um, but you can hear yeah. here. So Let's have is, some tones. Some tones. Let's have some, some tones. Clean, clean into a clean uh, DP40 amp there. Um, and that's under bridge pickups. You can hear it's definitely not single not, coiling. Not classic Telecaster, no. is it? 
and it's not that it's, it doesn't give you that um, bright. It's, it doesn't give you that fatness from the humbucker. So it's kind of mid yeah. range. You're right it in is, the middle. It is a humbucker in terms of its construction, right? Yeah, but it's just but, not as as doesn't have the output that a Gibson, you know, PAF style. And it won't give you the have. low end either. Right. So it'll give you more of a. I mean, this feels so great. It doesn't have that single coil snap, you know what I mean? But it just sounds oh, awesome. Uh, it's bit, so good. And then the, the, with the Dane on. I'm starting to hear that slight signature Gretschy. You know when you hear a Gretsch, uh, like a Filtertron or a TV Jones humbucker with distortion? Yeah. It tends to have a little bit more of that mid-rangey vibe to it than a, than a PAF or something. It absolutely does. I just does. heard like a, a sprinkle of that then. But I think a Telecaster body, because a lot of the Gretsch, of course, hollow, hollow uh, guitars, mm. I think that will give a different vibe to it. So that, so the, the, you know, the, yeah. this. Middle position there, clean. More of a twang, but still fat, but oh, chimey. So fat, but chimey. Certainly a very, very different tone. Uh, back pickup. Oh. Not, not Telecaster at all, is it? Not, not particularly. It doesn't have that, uh, that I like the no cast, so, you know. But. Bit of gain. Oh, that Malcolm, Malcolm Young thing right. going, you know. Yeah. Nine and a half inch radius on this board here as well. It's just magnificent. What are these woods here? Because I, I, I well, didn't we, even look at that. So they, normally what, what, what we do when we light. spec our custom shop guitars is oh. we tend to go um, <laughs> we tend to go with the sort of the regular build process rather than into master built just because yeah, uh, the lead times are um, more sensible yeah. and the price is more sensible as well. You could, of course, if you really wanted to, you know, you could master built one of these, choose your builder and that's fine but we, we we don't do that but what we do do is we kind of we absolutely spec we pay the extras to oh, go can you find the light pieces of, of yeah, wood so we're using ash light. on these we go for that's the light pieces we tend to we're very specific about how we want the next relic because we've got we've found a, a relic on on the necks that are awesome it feels great um course on necks as well yeah it's yeah. all it's basically it's all the best bits yeah oh, and then man. we choose the colors so it's an interesting one with with, with custom shop guitars because there is a there is a catalog. You know, you can go onto the Fender website. You can get a catalog each year at NAMM, and there'll be specific models within that catalog that Fender will build. And some guitar stores will buy those models, and that'll be what their custom shop selection is, and and that's cool. Pete and I and, and our guitar team here have always gone. Uh, you know, I don't really. I quite like the idea of us having completely unique stuff. Not yeah. because we know how to make guitars better or anything, <laughs> but just because I think it becomes a bit more interesting. And there's a sense mm. of like when you do buy one of these, this is relatively unique. So yeah, yeah. The, none of these guitars here are like regular catalog Fender guitars. They're all no, built no, no. to our sort yeah. of spec. They're also <sighs> unbelievably small numbers. So there are two silver ones and two green ones. I think there's another color coming uh as well in another month or two's time and i'm not saying that we'll never make more silver ones or we'll never make more green ones or whatever but we tend not to so we tend to you know unless something's crazy popular like the purple tell yeah. you where over the last two or three years we've maybe made 20 of those or something like that um most of what you see in these videos they come in there'll be there'll be a couple to sell and then maybe nothing again for a year or maybe if they're popular we might just do them in different colors again so yeah but i mean, i've I got to show the, you this because yeah, this, this get, amazes on, me go right? on, so go here on, is go on same I was guitar, say something about just in this oh, oh. this drab olive green with a black guard is i don't think it's like a <laughs> classic um fender color uh, not at all but ever, ever since uh, chris cornell did his 335 signature yeah. which i think was it 
Was was he alive? No, well, yeah, it was when he was alive, wasn't yeah. it? It wasn't like a posthumous sort of thing, if I've said that word correctly. Uh, but he did a three three five in in olive green with a black guard, and and it was like. Holy moly, how's that colour combination like never yeah. been done before? We need to try that in tele. There's then, something about telecasters that works yeah. in, in cool colours. Anyway, well. let me Sorry. give you. So, this is the same, no pedals. It's got balls like the biggest pair you've ever seen on a bull in a field ever. And that rock and roll piece that we played in the opening jam wasn't rehearsed or anything we just well i say it wasn't rehearsed we literally we probably played a million times about before, a but... minute before the cameras started rolling we're like man it's so good so um that's my clean sound and i was saying you know it's, a, it's expensive guitar into a pretty expensive amplifier and then <laughs> but with a 79 pound overdrive pedal and it just sounded So if you're watching these videos going, oh man, I can't afford the guitar and I can't afford the amplifier. You that afford is a the Nobles ODR Mini, yeah. which I think is 79 pounds. If yeah, it's something not, like that, then 69, I apologize, 70, but it's certainly quid. the most affordable bit other than my Plectrum in this whole rig. So look, these are the double bound um, Telecasters. I don't know what we call them, these double bound 50s. Double bound 52 Telecasters with TV Jones pickups in them. Were they, with the, with the large C neck, and Large C. with just to the guys, because I've had I've seen somebody comment asking what the frets are. There's 6505 uh, Vince's tall narrow right okay. uh, frets on here, and yeah. we spec that and everything because that's on the purple telecaster so as well. It comes with a beautiful, beautiful custom shop tweed case, and here is a picture of the guitar in the case, looking <laughs> glorious. <laughs> there you are, editing team. Don't forget to take that picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just cut you out like saying that. Uh, <laughs> Um, well, moving swiftly on to something that um, recently has been really dear to my heart because I, I um, was lucky enough to get a hold of one of the um, Brett Daniel Telecasters, um, Thin Line. I did, there's something that's been going on with the Thin Line. Paul Davis had one uh, and him and Daniel Steinhardt was fighting about that guitar. Did you Were know that? Atonement, that was a Toman. I did not know that. Everybody at this uh, thing, Atonement, was playing this uh, this thin line telly, and of course it's been around. This, this, the butterscotch with the black guard and the 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 you know the, with the maple neck, and uh, just that heavy relic over. It looks wicked. It's so cool, and it weighs nothing because what does of it course add? it well, is. I tell you, go to our website because on the website, assuming you get there before this is sold, yeah, uh, it will actually have all the weights of all these guitars on yeah, it. Yeah, they'll all be on the on the traveler sheet. Does it, what does it weigh? Uh, does it? And I don't think that, I don't think it sure says it on the traveller sheet what it no. weighs. But but anyway, so I'm again, guessing next to nothing. I mean, it is just glorious. Again, same frets, quarter saw neck, uh, just heavy relics. Oh, look at that neck! I know the neck is just glorious. It feels so good. Um, you've got so this this is the same specs as from my uh, purple Telecaster. So you've got the twisted Tele and the no caster, uh, and the Danny Gatton um, brass saddles on here. So that's Danny all the same. Gatton man. Yeah, because that's something with those, when you listen to this through my lapel mic here, it's, it's just this spank and this sing going on. And then, of course, if you turn it up, you can hear it's so oh, different. That you almost need to, I mean, yeah, we, it's yeah. almost worth playing those side by side, but you begin to realise now how much fatter the, the TV Jones double bound sounds but than, let, let than me the do regular telly. So here's just a G. It's a different vibe, There's, isn't it? It's, different such vibe. A diff, it's a different vibe. It's fatter. You know, it's got that that humbuckery type fatness, mm -hmm. but not humbuckery. It's right in the middle, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, so the, 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 the Thin Line came out in 1969. It was first designed by a German called Roger... Ross Miles or something. Really? I don't know. Yeah, German. Well, he worked uh, for Fender, did he? I don't know, but a German. So there's a German luthier right. designer that designed it in 1968. It then became uh, it came into Fender catalog in 69, I believe, and then in 72. That's when they put the oh, the custom, yeah, telecustom, the, tele the, yeah. the telecustom on it. Uh, so this was only in production for. So, the, for so this is a this particular spec of guitar is a. It's interesting. It's, isn't it's it? essentially a, a, a 51 no caster. 
neck and pickup configuration, but with a late 60s thin line uh, body. Yeah, with a 69. Uh, cool. So, and, and then the neck is, of course, not 51 because it's kind of, it's got the same C, yes. large C. So it's kind of, it's later, right. almost like 59 kind of thing. So it's a really beautiful, playable It's, it's guitar. funny, on, on, on that point that, <laughs> where, that Pete, so we'll have talked about this in previous videos, but yeah. it's important. So. Pete's Telecaster, the purple one, is a no-caster, right? Yeah. But when you play it, the neck doesn't feel quite as crazy fat as like other no-casters that we played. No. So we do two versions of that guitar. One where we call it Large U, which is a more typical no-caster neck. Yeah. And one where we call it Large C, which is, a, which is just slightly narrower and more in line with with actually what's on Pete's telly. Yeah. If I'm honest with you, I think on a lot of these vintage guitars, because there was no, you know, they weren't CNCing necks or anything like that. You, you played five different, you know, early fifties guitars, yeah. and, and that you know of the same guitar, obviously, but they'll they'll all have a slightly different feel. So there was no real, like you know, oh, you can definitively say that's the spec of that yeah. era guitar. But yeah, so we do, as I said, lot. Large U is for the person that just goes, I love those Big. baseball bat necks. Yeah. Large C is for the guy that just likes like a chunky strap neck, you know, yeah, not, it's, or it's a, like a chunky fender neck. Yeah, not, not exactly. crazy chunky. It's though. not crazy chunky. It just feels mm. right, li li uh, lays really yeah. nicely there in the hand. Uh, but we're rambling on, so let's just yes. see what it sounds like. Definitely oh, a much, man. it's proper sing to it. And then with the Dane. Middle position. Much more of a Telecaster vibe, but it's got that hollowness. It's got that hollow, that. Bit of slur on the back pickup. Bright with the Dane. That's not high gain, but that's the cool thing about when we developed the Dane with the single with the with the tele pickups is that when you are on the front, it's kind of mellow, and then on the back, it overdrives it oh, much more. So because we, we developed the, that was used. My purple tele was used in the. I was That's watching. Why it just um, so great, man. I was watching some reruns of Glastonbury recently. You know, they've been the BBC have been yeah, doing yeah. those guys. Yeah. And I was watching Bruce Springsteen, and like, there he is. But He's got the... like black t-shirt, black jeans, uh, rolled up. And it, but he plays as well with this like. Um, he doesn't strum. He literally, he literally strum. It must be something like a tempo thing to keep him in time. But he plays chords like this. And it's such a wicked. I didn't realize he, was a, he does the thing where he goes up and he does all the jewels. It's Steve Van Zant, yeah, yeah. the dude in the yeah. E Street band. Uh, he and he's like dueling away with him. He's a good player as well, Springsteen. And it's he's like, got a he's got a Marshall four by twelve cab laying down like two, that, two of firing them firing right up in his two face. Of them. It's like, just insane. Yeah. But there's that like. That's, the, that's what you can do with the Telecaster, which is just, that's everything on full, but it's all in the dynamic of how you pick it. Especially with the Dane, not that I'm trying to sell the Dane, but with that just works so nicely. Just the boost side here without.
Can you can you imagine in the early fifties <laughs> what it must have been like being a guitar player in LA and Leo Fender turning up and going, "Will you can try this? Can you new, just try, try this? this thing? You know, what I mean, it's like." Is it just like, because you've got nothing to really compare it to other than maybe your acoustic guitar or some sort of arch top that you've been playing, you know, like a, 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 like a jazz box. I can't, I don't even know if they had, you know, they can't possibly have had any sense of like how revered that guitar was going to become. No, I mean, I could, I, the, honestly, Telecasters for me, it's just, it's got it's something. It's your design and guitar without it a doubt, It probably right? is, but that's because it, but as we talked about before, you have to kind of, it's like, I feel the same as Les Paul. Les Paul and the Telecaster actually, for me, are two quite similar guitars. I don't know if I should say that, but nice. because it's got, a, it's got a thing that you can, you can do so much with it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, I could play these all day long. I think it's that there's, there's anyway. something about a three-way switch with only two controls, and I guess the Les Paul's got four controls. Yes, but it's, but it's, but it's one for each. Three. So, yeah. So, is there an element of going, look, you, you can't? On, on, I always kind of feel on a strat. It's like, oh, I've run out of things to play. I'll use the tremolo arm a bit. It'll it'll get me out of it, like a, <laughs> yeah, you know, or yeah. I'll I'll try one of the other pickup <sighs> positions, or I don't know. Maybe that's a bit unfair on the strat, but. There is a certain thing about the Telecaster. It's it's there. It's laid bare for the player to go. Look, you just got to, you've got to do it all. Yeah, yeah. But here. that's you what know, I'm saying. Like, with the Les Paul, it's got the similar kind of vibe mm -hmm. that you you're gonna have to work a little bit for it. But once you get it, mm -hmm. it's just you know, it's just you you get it. Let, let's finish this, off. So the, 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 the pink one here, pink with the anodized gold guard. Uh, this is a said. This is this is another one uh, of the re repros of Pete's purple telly. So we've got the the twisted telly and the no caster pickup set. Uh, we've got this is large C um, on the neck here. All That's you know, gorgeous, super light man. swamp ash, uh, cordesorn maple neck, beautiful case, and you know, the, the relicking on this is just stunning. It is heavy relic. It's again, it, I know it's divisive. Yeah, it's just so weird, you know. I'm only going to just say that I would say 80% of people who watch these videos w will don't like relics. Yeah. You know, definitely the relic lovers are in the minority. And yet when you look at the sales of the guitars, yeah. it's completely the other way around. 80% yeah. of all these guitars will sell as relics. So it's yeah. kind of like that weird, what, what, how does that if, if these these guitars would sit on the wall, do you remember we ordered some because people say, oh, you don't do any non-relic ones. And when you do, people don't buy them because it doesn't have the it's this, the, the mojo for me personally. Yeah. This just got some mojo. It's just a, it's an out and it's out a, player's guitar, isn't it? Oh. It's just, anyway, look. Oh. Um, this so thing, man. Here we go. Oh. Uh, this thing. Neck. I'm going to use my slow reverb just because I've got one. Ha <laughs> ha!
I, I, I've changed saying. my mind. None of these for sale. You, I'm buying you every need a single tele- one myself. You still myself. haven't got one. You still haven't got a telecaster. That is my challenge, right? The problem is, the problem is, is every time one comes in, I go, I'm buying that one. The little bit of my thing in my brain goes, yeah, but what about the next one that comes in? <laughs> it's like, oh, but mother. Th- these well, look, are all great, man. These are all great. You're I not going to go wrong with any you. of these. I, 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 this I, one, though. Nothing makes sense to me in this world. This, this, you know, how do you get it so right first time off the bat? And fair play to Fender Custom Shop because it's like, you know, what is ultimately still two bits of wood <laughs> bolted together, uh, you know, with a relatively simplistic pickup set and, and bridge on here. I don't know what they do here. I mean, you look, no. I'm, I'm telling you now, the, 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 the law of diminishing returns or whatever you want to call this, you know, if you go and get a, a if you spend 400 pounds on a Squire, Squire one classic did, vibe, yeah. you're going to get a guitar that's probably 60, 70% as good. You know, it's like, it is completely bonkers. As mold on this, man. And the more as you, yeah, the, 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 that last couple of thousand pounds that you're spending on, on this kind of guitar, it's Three. everything is about, <laughs> as Pete was just saying there, it's some sort of mystical mojo that's very, very difficult to, to, to sort of um, yeah. put into words. Anyway, we're rambling well, only. We're we rambling, are rambling. On. I mean, I, I can't I, stop playing this guitar. I keep so, playing it. It's but so stay nice. tuned. Look, you know, so Pete, Pete and I will typically, you know, we're not just us. We get the, we get the guys from Fender involved. We get um, we got other, to meet you other people. Yeah, we you know, every two or three months, hopefully, we're bringing you something that's a little bit different, a little bit funky. Do you guys like the colours, please? Sir? Do you like the the, the Telly's double bound with the different colours? I personally lo- love them, the, and I think Telly just leans itself to have some funky if, colours. If these are popular, we should tell you the serial numbers, by the way. Oh, go know, for it. Yeah. I mean, although we've, you know, there will be one or two more of these in stock at Andertons that we haven't used for this video. These are the ones we've touched. Where is the serial? It's on the bridge, isn't it? So the pink one here is R for Lodger, uh, <laughs> one o one. 105. Okay, this one here, this uh, thin line is R106034. That's a long one. Is my, it? Yeah. So it's six digits, isn't it? You got more than six digits. No, on yeah, that. but my, my purple telecaster is, is just uh, 12,900. Oh, you've even remembered. Uh, right, oh, yeah. the green uh, TV Jones is R. Uh, Willie's Wadja! <laughs> Willie's Wadja! Uh, 105584. <laughs> uh, this is R104760. They all come with a beautiful case, some case candy, and uh, the little presentation pack here with your signed certificate. And what, you know, awesome. You, I love that they've been doing this for a few years now, but I love this. You get your, your, your traveler uh, certificate, which is essentially every single component of your guitar detailed out for you so that you can see exactly and then tony has to sign them all off tone tony Tony. that's 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 ironic isn't it that the head of custom shop is called tone tony just saying but there anyway, you are, there we are. Thank you for watching, guys. Man, I wish we could shoot videos like this all day long. See, this is got, only going to go downhill from now on. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Telly Tuesday, what a day. Yeah, it's uh, the Thanks best for day. watching, guys. Um, you know, I hope if you're lucky enough to, to be uh, the owner of one of these, please, hashtag Anderson's yeah. made me do it. Instagram, Facebook, whatever, we'll find you. Uh, and we will like those posts. And whoever gets any of these are going to be a lucky person. Bye. <laughs>